Pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. And sometimes when we hear that line, we think, oh, that's, that's obviously about the separation of church and state. Of course, there is separation of church and state in the sense that the, there's no state religion, or that, you know, it's not a theocracy, you know, in our country or any democracy, that, you know, we're not sort of running the, the country. I think sometimes we're tempted to think that that means that, that church and, and state or even just the outside world are all just completely different and have nothing to do with one another. Like when we come here in church, we kind of like, we, we think one way, we, we act one way, we are of, this, of one mindset, but then, you know, when we're, when we're outside of here, it's just a whole other thing. And we're, we're controlled by, by different values and we think different things and all that. And I don't, I don't think that's what that means. Because it all belongs to God, as we heard in our first reading and also in our psalm. And, you know, the life of the world isn't apart from God because nothing is really apart from God. He's, he's above and, and through and in it all. So our life in church, our life outside of church, it all, it's all meant to, to correspond. So we think about things like the state, like politics, you know, which, you know, is a, is a touchy subject. And even uh, a lot of people have questioned why there's political content in our, in our bulletins or, or on our social media. We're not at all interested in talking politics. I have no interest in talking politics, um, but the church is very much about what is moral. So we're not talking about pol political issues, we're talking moral issues. Sometimes moral issues become political issues. It's not our problem. I wish they weren't, and we could talk about something else. But friends, we're at a, a critical point here in our state with this constitutional amendment. And I'd love to be talking about something else, like more like Jesus. You know, and even a part of me, you know, says, why don't you just stay in your comfort zone? And even now there's this voice that's saying, dude, just don't say anything, it'll be fine. But not only do we have this right to, to speak out, we have a responsibility. It's my responsibility. And frankly, I have enough to face on the day of judgment. I don't want this to be one more thing. This is so important. It's so important. Now, when we read the language of this, we might say, now, where, it doesn't sound so extreme. Like, where does it say in there that it allows abortion all the way up until nine months? Where does it say that it takes away the rights of parents? Like, if your child wants to have some life-altering medical procedure and you have no control over that. Where does it say that it might take away health and safety standards? Well, the people who write this stuff aren't dumb. They know if they put that in there, you'd be like, ah, I don't, I don't know if that's what we want. So there's all this vague language to try to, in a sense, pull the wool over our eyes and make it seem not so bad. This vague language, it could open up a Pandora's box of all of these things. If you don't think that's the case, just look at Michigan, who's uh, passed something like this last year, and now all this stuff is, is just out there. And so when it comes to this, I understand, I've come to understand more over the last few years, that people hate being told how to vote. People hate being told how to vote, and I get that. So in, in that sense, of that part of your sensibilities I apologize. But there's, there's just nowhere else to go with this. From our, our Catholic perspective, hopefully just for, for human perspective, that there's just, there's just nothing good about this. It's not like, you know, trying to weigh two different candidates and like, well, this one has some good and bad, this one has some good and bad, and I gotta try to, try to figure this out. Because this is such a deep moral issue, I guess we get to decide what kind of state we live in and what's allowed. Now we look into what the Lord had in store when he made us in our image and likeness and probably has some good idea of what's going to really lead to our flourishing and what is not. Maybe you've seen that commercial on TV from the proponents of this and not only is it just filled with statements that are just flat out not true that 
have that one second clip of the guy praying in a Catholic church with the divine mercy image in the background. If it, makes, if it sends a chill up your spine, I think that's the appropriate response. Diabolical. There's just no other way to say it. Speaking of the divine mercy, though, if you suffer the pain of abortion that you've experienced, please know that you're not alone. Please know that we love you, that God loves you, that there are caring people who are equipped to help lead you to healing and reconciliation and forgiveness and the freedom that you deserve. If you or someone you love now or in the future is struggling with an unexpected pregnancy, please know again that there are caring people who are equipped to walk with you, not just until birth, but well after that. But here we are on, on this day in this pivotal point in, in the history of our state. And on this moral issue, we very much have a voice. And it needs to be shared. And I, and I hope you, you receive it. St. Paul, in, uh, in our second reading, talks about how grateful he is for those who have been chosen, who are out doing the, the work of faith, the labor of love, enduring in hope. As we encounter Christ here in the Mass today, let us ask for his grace to really live his life and to discern what is for our good and for the good of others, knowing that, that our neighbors deserve us to be faithful citizens, that we, taking on the life of Christ, look out for the poor, for the weak, for the most vulnerable, knowing that each and every person from conception to natural death and everywhere in between is made in the image and likeness of God, this God who made us in love and, and for love, who is with us today, whose Holy Spirit looks to enliven us in our lives, and that the God of all history is with us, and he'll continue to supply what we need.